Fidel Castro could legitimately be regarded as either a hero or as a tyrant, or as both at the same time. In 1959, Fidel Castro rose to power in Cuba. Commander Castro, why are you leading a revolution? He has been one of the most controversial figures in the world ever since. It is not the same to fight for liberty as to fight against it. A political thorn in the side of the United States. Our sympathy goes out to the people of Cuba, now suffering under the yoke of a dictator. This is Castro's story, told through media reports. Fidel Castro, face the nation. Rare images. I have to be careful. And recordings. And it is not an easy job to come here and to speak with you, the reporter of the United States. Fidel Castro believed the CIA had been involved in a series of plots on his life. Some of this material has never been broadcast. Some of it has not been seen in decades. Do you believe that the de democratic man ought to be afraid of any idea? Dr. Castro, you are a lawyer, and I'm afraid I will have to act as a judge. We would like you to answer our questions. There are theories that you held President Kennedy responsible and that you were involved in his assassination. Did you have anything to do with it? Commander, what handled it if you were caught? I never would be casual alive. Like Henry Adams, we say, give me liberty or give me death. This program was made possible in part by contributions to your PBS stations from viewers like you. Thank you. Cuba, the late 1950s. For tourists, Cuba is an exotic land of wonder. Gambling casinos, restaurants, luxury hotels, swimming pools, and miles of pristine beaches. Just 90 miles from the United States, Cuba is a playground for Americans. But for many Cubans, life on the island is no paradise. In the island's interior, far from where tourists stay, poverty runs rampant. The education and health care systems are poor. Living conditions rival those of any third world country. Much of the blame for the nation's vast dichotomy between rich and poor can be laid at the feet of one man, Cuba's president. Fulgencio Batista, former army sergeant, former general, holds the reins of power as was backed by the army and by those who favor government by a strong man. Batista denies he is a dictator and says some of his opponents are pro-communist. But his strong arm methods and the constant threat of inflation have kept political opposition bubbling. It's estimated by his rivals that during Batista's reign, more than 20,000 political dissidents have been killed. The mountains of eastern Cuba. After years of fighting, it is here that the raging of revolution thunders through the jungle canopy. Men and women have taken up arms and launched a bloody guerrilla war. To them, Batista has destroyed Cuba. Their goal is to oust him from power. Their leader is a charismatic Cuban who says he will fight to the death to liberate the people of Cuba. His name is Fidel Castro. This is Dr. Fidel Castro, 31, holder of four university degrees. We finally get our news cameras into Castro's headquarters. Castro's top lieutenants are Argentinian-born Che Guevara, who participated in an unsuccessful revolution in Guatemala, and his brother Raul Castro, an avowed communist. Fidel Castro is the son of a Cuban sugar farmer and comes from an upper middle class background. He is one of seven children. Even at a young age, Castro is brash, outspoken, and willing to take risks. Castro attends a Jesuit boarding school and earns a law degree from the University of Havana. He becomes emboldened 
by nationalistic philosophies. In 1952, Castro runs for Congress to help improve Cuba. But before elections are held, Batista takes power in a military coup. In response, Castro gathers a group of anti-Batista revolutionaries. They plan an attack on the military barracks in Moncada. Castro believes by taking the barracks, they will acquire enough weapons to begin an uprising against Batista. The raid takes place at dawn on July 26, 1953. Castro will use this date, July 26, as the moniker for his future revolution. The attack is quickly put down. Many of the rebels are killed. Castro and dozens of others are captured. At his trial, Castro utters a phrase that will come to define him. History will absolve me. Castro is sentenced to 15 years in prison. Two years later, Batista buckles to international pressure and releases political prisoners, including Castro and the others who attacked the Moncada barracks. In 1958, they gather again in the Sierra Maestra Mountains to fight Batista's soldiers. Commander Castro, why are you leading a revolution? I am leading a revolution because the legal government of my country was overthrown by the army led by Batista. 82nd days before a general election in which the people of Cuba was going to elect its own government.